with Eddie Howe back in the dugout, they clinched two promotions in three years, reaching the Premier League. <laughs> Welcome once again to an exciting journey through football club finances as we untangle the financial web of the football club revealing how off-field performances measure up to those on the field. This week we're focusing on AFC Bournemouth. Join us as we transport you to the picturesque south coast, delving into the financial odyssey of the Cherries over the last decade. Let's go back to 2013, Bournemouth, then in League One, embarked on a remarkable journey. With Eddie Howe back in the dugout, they clinched two promotions in three years, reaching the Premier League. <laughs> Enjoying a commendable five-year spell in the top flight, they faced a setback in 2020, experiencing relegation to the Championship and bidding farewell to Howe's incredible eight-year tenure. Uh, it's very difficult to do that. It's um, just been an amazing journey. The Cherries would consolidate, earning their way back to the Premier League in 2022. Now let's turn our attention from the field to the financial playbook. What unfolded behind the scenes? If you've seen any of our previous videos, you know about the significant revenue spike that followed promotion to the Premier League. What is surprising? Compare the two years of Championship revenue before and after the Premier League stretch. Even with Covid, parachute payments mean they made over five times as much revenue. So let's compare 2015 and 2022. 2021 is distorted due to the COVID impact, so let's leave that one. Go back to 2015, and the Cherries earned £5 million from the EFL and FA Cup. Fast forward to 2022, the EFL income is effectively the same, but they now have an extra £38 million from the Premier League to support their return. It's just as evident by league position, and unsurprisingly, Premier League revenues are still three times higher on average. Get in! Come on! Now let's dive into the bottom line. Bournemouth follows a similar pattern to other clubs, facing losses in those early League One and Championship years. Promotion to the Prem initially brings increased profits, but losses return from year three in the top flight. Most surprising, they made a substantial profit in the year after relegation. This might be the first Championship year we've seen a team in the black. That aside, on average, it's losses all around. Well, that's a load of because I... I no, Eddie, Eddie, I, don't, Eddie, don't. So why is that? Time for our patented p and walkthrough. Set the timer, grey out the revenue, and let's head to staff costs. In the years before the Premier League, staff costs overshadowed revenue. Similar to many other clubs, Bournemouth bet on themselves to reach the promised land. Those early years in the top flight seem robust, but the constant rise in the wage for the road's margins the longer they stay, increasing from under 70 to over 85% before Covid. And just how much bang for their buck did Bournemouth get? In the Championship, they consistently achieved points at well under the £1 million mark. In the Premier League, Bournemouth impressed in the early years, delivering mid-table finishes at under 2.5 million a point. Unfortunately, the return reduced in that relegation year. After factoring in staff costs, those Premiers come out on top. Next up, operating expenses. Usually, we see a significant jump when teams gain promotion to the Premier League, but Bournemouth spikes in the year of promotion. Why is that? In 2015, Bournemouth received a financial fair play penalty of 7.6 million. They also had to pay 2 million to former shareholders following their promotion. The Cherries would subsequently claw back 2 million of their settlement. One area Bournemouth has thrived in is loan fees. Don't ask why these are not in revenues, they're treated as other operating income, which is why we bundled them in here. Over the 10 years, they've made 24 million, which all contributes to the bottom line. At EBITDA level, we're still reaching peak performance in those early Premier League years. Next up, stadium facilities. As usual, these aren't particularly significant in the grand scheme of things, so let's move on down to transfer fees. The associated costs of buying and selling players continue to grow throughout the Cherry stay in the Premier League, a common pattern as teams feel the need to invest more and more to preserve top flight football. The post-relegation period is fascinating. Bournemouth made a £19 million profit, balancing the books following Covid and relegation, but they seem to have reinvested it all back in the following year to achieve promotion. So there we see Bournemouth navigating between losses and profits. Whilst on average it's losses all around, the scale is more contained than other teams we've examined. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a lot to take in. And how about the cash situation? As always, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfers. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, takes an unusual path. Outflows as Bournemouth climbs the football pyramid, substantial cash influx in year one, but starting from 2020, the combo of COVID and relegation leads to cash outflows from the Vitality Stadium. However, on average, we're seeing modest cash flows coming in during the Premier League. 
Now, shifting our focus back to transfers, apart from 2020, net spending is negative. Throughout the decade, Bournemouth has spent £116 million of net cash on transfer fees, averaging £21 million annually in the top flight years. Combine those and what do we get? A single season of cash coming into the club. The other nine all involve money going out the door, regardless of the league. In total, £191 million is the net cash spent by the Cherries. So how much has been invested to fund this journey? Well, the steady inflow as Bournemouth climbs to the Premier League. And for those first two years, not much extra cash is needed. But the funding starts to ramp up from 2018, reaching over £200 million by 2022. So what's happened since? Well, Gary O'Neill maintained Bournemouth's Premier League status with a 15th place finish, only to be succeeded by Andoni Iraola at the end of the 2023 campaign. It was more about a particular opportunity to give our football club a different identity. In the midst of that season, Bill Foley completed his takeover of the club, leading a consortium that included Hollywood star Michael B. Jordan. So how will the finances evolve under the new identity? We'll just have to wait and see. Next time, we'll be heading to West Yorkshire as we examine Huddersfield Town. See you then.